I cannot even believe I'm a part of this movie. It's just that's the that's the best goddamn part. Cause I was like, I'm gonna be at the premiere. I'm in this movie, bro. <laughs> I can't believe it. Arrakis is a death trap. I'll kill him. This is an extermination. First conversation was a phone call. I was actually at Sundance at the time, and I got a call while I was on the mountain and uh, rushed down to my room and sat in front of the, my iPad and there he was, the man, and he, he had his whole, he, had, he turned the camera around and then I just saw a whole room filled with everyone, production, wardrobe, everyone was there and so that got a little nervous. But then he went on to keep telling me about the movie and asking me questions and then really kind of felt like he was just telling me all about Duncan and pitching me the idea, which was, very surreal because I've never been, normally you're auditioning for it, you're, you're not getting pitched um, yeah. the role, especially like by someone like that. So, um, and you never get to say yes. And like, he's like, I want you. He was really looking at me going like, is this the guy, is this the guy? Would you mind, would you mind taking your beard off? Would you shave for it? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, are you offering me the role? He's like, yes, I want you to be Duncan Idaho. And I'm like, uh, yeah, man, I can't wait. So um, it was just so, you never get to celebrate there. You never get, it's yeah. always like this hard process and you're almost there and the anxiety and it's just like you to be able to talk to the filmmaker and he's like, I want you. And he's pitching me the, the, the story. I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I'm in. So, but he had the whole book. I couldn't believe how generous he was. He like shared um, and sent me the, the his, his, you know, his playbook, his, his, his vision. Like it was just like, yo, hey buddy, here, there's just an 80 page book I made with every picture and everything that's in it. And like, you know, and there's there's literally moments and drawings that are in that, that I remember that that are in the movie, you know, that were in that book that are in the movie. I couldn't believe how like spot on, it's unbelievable. And even to that, I went there like, um, and I went with my buddies and we went out and shot in the desert just so I could have the feeling of like being in Wadi Lam being on Arrakis by myself, and so I was in wardrobe, and I went out and wandered around from like, I guess say like 11 to three in the middle of the day, and we go shoot in different places and climb mountains and do all this different stuff, and we made a little piece, and we showed it to Denny, and he was so inspired by it that next day, they didn't let me go in that time where we don't shoot in that high noon, so um, he took me in, we went out and shot, just very simple with Greg, and that shot ended up being in the movie, so it was really cool to like, he was having so much fun, like, oh, just that we went to go play, because everything for him was like, it's all mapped out, like, he, he knows exactly what he needs, so to have that little bit of, like, freedom to go play around and just, doesn't matter if it ends up on the floor, it's like, we're, you, you get juiced up, you, get, you start feeling good, even though you're tired, and maybe you should be resting, then it's just, it gives you that fuel, the creative fuel. A boy! Hey, Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always, you know that. I've been having dreams about a girl. On Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. Hey, you. Put on some muscle? I did? No. Well, I mean, I love the idea of serving something. You know, that something that's greater than you. And, you know, I play a lot of outcasts and kings and men that are, you know, do bad things. And this was nice to be like a samurai to serve, to, to be that knight, to give everything for this family. And um, I love that. I love the relationship between me and Timothy and being able to have, I really felt like I had those kind of men in my life when I was younger who went and explored and went mountain climbing and come back and I was in Iowa and you hear these great stories and it's your excitement to get out there. And so I really got to feel like I was the explorer going out and bringing back this gold to Timothy. And so that was like a lot of other moments just being, um, you know, for my own son, I have these, you know, the, this whole moment was is a, is a Kali thing that we, that my son does. And they, we were training in Kali, and I was like, oh, this is appropriate, we'll do this for the movie. And it's a sign to my, sign to my son to, you know, and he's 12 and to be like, oh, your dad's up there. And it was, it was pretty heavy to watch that, that last fight scene with him and, you know, I'm okay, son, I'm right here, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. but like 12 year old boy going like, Papa, no, and you're just like, oh gosh, I'm, 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 it's, all, it's all right. <laughs> That's the way you want to go out, taking out 19, you know, like you want to go out that way, taking out 19 men, 
protecting your boy. That's how you want to go down. And then you get back up and you finish him off. <laughs> that's the kind of man. That that's the kind of stuff you need to do. That's that's the way you want to go out. I think my fair. I think my favorite moment where it's just like Denis is so good at the sound design and just like the the suspense. Like you watch Sicario and you're like. It's just driving a car through Mexico. It's just going through the border, yeah. but I'm on the edge of my goddamn seat because it's just so nerve wracking. And so just all the sounds and like him hearing it and the sand coming down and the bug and just that moment of like Duncan hearing it, like that moment on, like, you know, that's where I love Denis. That's where that action just gets so much more and just you can taste it and like you just know that fear is coming. He just stands up into that shot and he looks back and just walk, just to, like throw that thing off like it's game time. That whole thing, and I was like, I don't want to fight in gloves too. I cannot stand it. I got to do an Aquaman, but I was like, Denny, I got to take these things off. I can't fight. So he's like, Oh, it's okay, Jason. You do this, take this off. We'll get it off until it's perfect. Boom, this comes off. I already had one glove off. Pull this glove off, and it's just like game time. And I just wanted to be able to do that to my son. That's my favorite part in the whole movie. Let's fight like demons. Sun Team had, you know, Sun Team and Denny. Definitely wanted to, you know, they had a style that they wanted to do. I trained to do Kali, which I've never done before. I love fighting with knives, so like very close quarters, which is, it, it's nice to have that kind of intimacy with these little short, kind of like samurai-esque blades. Um, mm -hmm. So it fit with my, what I love to do. So I like, you know, fighting two hands. It is, you know, like I said, it's, it's most of the stuff we did is like preparing for that last battle. Fight 19 guys in the sand and trying to keep your legs strong enough. And so we started doing a little bit of kettlebells and more of endurance stuff just to keep it so we can hold that weight up. After quite a few takes, you get you get winded. I didn't get to see all the Harkonnen side. You know I mean? There's all that whole world that I don't get to see where you're just like, whoa, man, it's unbelievable. So I, I've watched it four times, bro. I'm uber, uber, uber fan, and every time I watch it, it gets better and better and better. I'm gonna, the, the premiere will be the fifth time, and then I'm gonna go watch it in IMAX. I wanna see it on the, like, I wanna see it in IMAX. So, um, but the sound, I, the first time I saw it was in the sound mixing booth in Toronto. So I was shooting C2, and I got to see it with like the best sound quality ever. That's like where they mixed it. So that was pretty amazing. Like, it wasn't the most comfortable, like, you know whatever seats for that, but it was for just, you're sitting at the control center going like, whoa, uh -huh. so heavy. Awesome. I'm putting, I'm claiming it right now, dude. I guarantee to get the Oscar, 100%. And my favorite, favorite day of set was definitely when we were all together, when Javier walks in. When we get to meet Stilgar, it'll go down in, in my, like, you know, top five moments because you get to work with those heavy hitters. I, I've never, I never stood and acted with that kind of, that level of talent before. I'm definitely the, the shittiest one in the whole room. And uh, I was really afraid that they're gonna find out. And I'm the one that has to do all the sci-fi jargon, which is like, oh God, they're hiring yeah. me to do this. And so I just never seen it. We were all very close. Javier was so sweet. And just being able to talk with him, and right before he does the scene, totally different dude, walks in to that scene with so much mana, like so much power and like just, yeah. He didn't miss a beat, like there's stairs, he's walking just straight through, just struts straight in and just eyes everyone, eyes everyone down. And I'm just looking at him going like, I can't f this guy is like rolling up like Mick Jagger, dude. This guy's just so much confidence. He gets to me and looks at me and I'm just like, well, we're supposed to be friends. So I went there, so I'm like, thank God he's not, eyeball he's not eyeballing me. I have a little smile. He looks at everybody else and that's when he spits. And uh, it's just amazing to watch him just Stared on everyone and him and Brolin, it's, you know, they've done enough films together So they're great, but just to watch like him and Brolin have to be lock horns, you know, all the time And I'm just like, hey, he's my buddy. I'm, I'm friends with everybody <laughs> So I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, man <laughs> You're standing here in the middle of like a no Oh, bro, just pinching myself and just praying that Denny is just not gonna go like uh, because it's too late to recast, you know, I mean, like he's he's not as good as I thought he was going to be. <laughs> but just seeing it live, mm -hmm. nothing like it, man. He's just, he's got, he's all that in a bag of chips, man. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. My Lord Duke. Well, I think for the people who are, I think for people who are the Dune fans, they're gonna be, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it hits everything. It's amazing, I, I think mm -hmm. there won't be, 
I don't think there'll be any fan that's gonna be like, oh, that was that wasn't right. No one. If you're a Dune, if you're a Dune fan, you are beyond pumped. We're only halfway through, you know. And Denny's the perfect person to be doing this. The cast is absolutely perfect. Craig Fraser is a genius. It, it, it's just it's it's cinema, and it's an adult sci-fi movie. It's not even sci-fi. It's just an adult adventure. I love how smart it is. I it's one of those films that you got to keep watching it and watching it and watching it. It'll live with you when, when you leave. So it's just one of those things that's gonna be like, it'll be in your dreams. It's gonna resonate with a lot of people. And I feel like it'll bring on a lot with this cast, with Zendaya and Timothy, obviously, to, you know, the Regal supporting cast. It's, it's got everything in it, man. And such great world building, and I'm excited to be a part of it. And it's gonna, there's many more to come. May there be many, many, many more. I cannot even believe I'm a part of this movie. It's just, that's the, that's the best goddamn part. Cause I was like, I'm gonna be at the premiere. I'm in this movie, bro. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs>